Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mike Eric Game from Scratch. And today we are knocking one off my to-do list from like five years ago. I've been getting like requests for over five years now for me to cover the Castle Game Engine. So that's exactly what we are going to look at today. This is an open source free 2D and 3D game engine, uh, multi-platform available for Linux and Windows that uses the Pascal programming language. And I know I just lost a handful of you in terms of like, what's a Pascal? This is not a language that is in common use, even though this is actually the language I was taught programming with back in high school. Uh, and I'm not young. So this is something that has been around for quite a while. There's not a lot of people using Pascal, but thanks to projects such as Lazarus, which we'll see in just a minute, uh, there's a game engine out there that's using Pascal called the Castle Game Engine. So we're going to take a look at that one today. It is available over at... Bah, 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 bah. Come on, castle-engine.io. I will, of course, have that linked in the links down below. Uh, Castle Game Engine is a 2D and 3D game engine. supports a number of formats such as GLTF, Spine, Colada, and so on. You can develop cross-platform, including Windows, Linux, Mac OS, FreeBSD, as well as Android, iOS, and the Nintendo Switch and Raspberry Pi. There is a visual editor. It seems to be pretty new, uh, so there's a lot of things that they're still working towards. They're trying to court uh, Unity developers into the fold. In fact, they just did a document basically explaining how uh, Unity developers can adapt and learn to use um, the Castle Game Engine. It obviously uses Object Pascal as its programming language, as I mentioned very early on. This one is based around Lazarus. So you're going to need Lazarus to use Castle DB. What is Lazarus? It is a Delphi compatible, uh, Pascal compatible, obviously, um, free rad IDE. Uh, and you, basically, this is the visual studio of Pascal, I guess you could say, and it is tightly integrated with the whole Castle game engine. So if you're going to use one, you've got to use the other. The nice thing is both of those projects are completely free and open source. Uh, Lazarus speak under the GPL, LGPL license, and uh, the Castle game engine itself is under the LGBL2 license. We're going to come back and look at a couple of the details of the Castle game engine, some features, etc. But first, we're going to jump right in and take a look. So let's go over all, all of my fonts are here. Head over to here. So this is where I downloaded the Castle Game Engine. There is available in binaries format. Just bring it down. It's bearable for uh, Linux and uh, for Windows. Uh, there's some installed instructions. Just walk through them. I'll have them linked down below. But once you've got it running, go in here and bin. And what you're going to want to probably do is run Castle Editor. When you do that, yeah, let me just shut Lazarus down. So close that out. We're going to come in here and we're going to create a brand new project. So we're going to go in here. We'll create the, uh, we've got a couple options, model viewer, FPS game, and 2D game. We're going to create an FPS game in this particular example. And I've already done one. So let's just throw a two in there and yeah, go ahead and create that. So this is a simple uh, 3D game template that shows off what this is all about. Here you can see Castle's launcher or, or project manager or whatever you wish to call it. There is a full editor here. On top of that, you've got some viewers that are built in uh, that are built using Castle that you can actually access and into. So for example, if I come here and take a look at this GLTF file, we have a GLTF viewer so you can see the 3D enemy file here. But what we are going to do is take a look at the level. And those are under here. So we've got a couple of user interface things. So you can do your UI design here, but you also do 3D game development here as well. So we're going to go to state play, which would be your main game, and load it up. Now the graphics are not amazing. And I got to admit, the, um, the navigation system to walk around the screen is a little confusing. It, it, it'll kick in eventually. Uh, but here you can see a 3D world I'm trying to remember the traditional navigation. It doesn't use traditional navigation controls as I would expect to navigate around the viewport. But here you can see it in action. You can use this to place entities into your game world. So for example, over here, we've got our root node, which is a user interface as the top level parent. And then we've got things such as castle scenes as entities within the scene. Uh, again, if you check out that Unity document, we'll get back to it in a second. It kind of gives a bit of an explanation of how these things work. But you can see here, we have various different soldiers in our scene. Uh, they can be moved around and placed as entities in the world. Let me just go select that guy again. So here you can see how they are hooked up. Now, this one is a GLTF file. Uh, anything that is in your game could be accessed using URLs. So anything you dump in your data folder, so you can see your data folder right here, can be accessed using a URL starting with castle-data, and then it's just a direct structure down. So enemy soldier1.gltf. So you can see it, enemy soldier1.gltf. And we've got a number of traits and properties that we can set for that individual or entity. This world editor, again, is pretty new in terms of the visual aspects of it. So hopefully it does improve 
over time, but you can see you can move things around. Um, I do find it a little frustrating to use at times, but you can get the gist of it right here. At the same time, you can do things like you see here, we got some uh, controls here. So that's a label up here for your FPS controls and a, a text info label available right here. So you can create UI labels as well. These are all created basically by adding them in the hierarchy. So you can see you've got other components you can create. So transforms are things like transform is kind of the same thing as a game object, I guess you could say. There's 2D scenes. Um, and then you've got things like the uh, UI controllers as well are also available that you can build out this way. So that is your basic building blocks here. So here are all the various different UI controllers you can see. You can see you got, a, got a lot of stuff there. And they've got some of the, the game stuff that you would expect is mixed and matched into UI control. So for example, here you can see uh, an, a component for loading tiled-based maps. So once you've got all of this configured, you've got your level stuff placed in the world. Uh, you can head on over here to your root directory. And then we've got here an LPR file. That is a Lazarus project. We can open that up. Once you've configured things correctly, it tightly integrates into Lazarus. Here we can see Lazarus in action. Now this uses an old school. What was this called? This was SDI? Yeah, an SDI designed thing. Basically, you've got this control panel up here. It's, it's taking this from this was the way Delphi used to work, and this is the way Visual Basic used to work. Your editing windows are free-floating, like so. It's, I actually find it a little frustrating, to be honest. There's a reason why we moved beyond this kind of UI design and, and, and into you know multiple documents and tabs within a window, because this gets really confusing really fast, because this particular window is actually still under this icon. But that's an old school thing. We've kind of moved away from it, but that is what Lazarus is doing for its IDE. But you can see the code here for managing this. We can head on back over to the castle project manager here. We're going to see we've got our Pascal file. So we got this one starts up the game. These are the two different game state things here. So let's say here is our game state play. And again, I haven't done any uh, Pascal or Delphi programming in 20 years. So I'm not going to go through a lot of explanation of what's going on here. The code is borderline. I can read it because a lot of actual modern programming languages were heavily inspired by Pascal. In fact, C Sharp, the language that so many of you love, uh, the guy that uh, did it, it's actually the same guy, uh, Anders Helsberg, something along those lines. He is the fellow that actually invented the C-sharp language at Microsoft and Turbo Pascal before that. So there's a lot of um, things that came from the Delphi language that ended up in C-sharp, but we can zoom things in here. So you can see various different callbacks are handled here. So stop, update, press. And so on. So that is where your main game logic here. You can also see an example of artificial intelligence in action by going here and taking a look at the enemy controller here. Uh, this shows how to get an entity from the scene, move it around in the world or whatever. So you got those various different um, uh, entities, like these guys right here, these guys here. It finds them and controls them, uh, plays animation on it, and so on. You can see the controllers here. You'll see these things in the parentheses there. That is a Pascal comment. The code is quite well commented. And I got to say that in general about the Castle uh, game engine in general, it is incredibly well documented. So we're going to head on back over and look a little bit about that. So here we are, again, some of the features here. Uh, obviously, the big thing here is it's um, Pascal-based. If you want to pass scale based game engine castle is your only shot uh, it supports a number of different platforms there is the visual editor again the visual editor the stuff that we saw here uh, basically this this is new and developing so give it a little bit of time we'll see where it ultimately goes it's got support for existing file system uh, 3d objects out there like gltf which is nice to see um, yeah so that is the gist of it you got full uh, ui support we get a lot of details down here you got support for spine uh, animated objects full 2d and 3d support here you build for a number of different platforms there is quite a bit to this engine and then they do have to kind of work a little bit on the aesthetics of it because a lot of this is looking very distinctly 90s and a lot of people are going to look at this and go okay that is very 90s so hopefully they can start getting a lot of that really isn't down to the engine. It's down to the quality of the uh, demonstrations and the materials that go with it. So some slightly nicer looking stuff is going to uh, kind of sell this engine a little bit more, I suppose you could say. Uh, it is an open source project. It is available up on GitHub. 
It's available at that URL right there. I will, of course, link that in the linked article down below as well. So if you want to check this out a little bit more. Uh, in terms of licensing, the license is under it's LGPL, uh, sort of the Lesser GNU Public License. But it's I know you heard the words GPL. LGPL isn't nearly as bad. It's also got a static linking exception. So basically, if you make changes to the engine itself, you got to redistribute those changes. But you can use it as a binary link to it. And you don't have to release your source code or anything like that. Uh, the... Um, Pascal compiler and Lazarus, those uh, the two things, the IDE and the uh, compiler behind it, are also under the same license, the LGPL license. Uh, so that's the licensing under this stuff. Do be aware, there's mixed licensing. Unfortunately, the editor itself is under the GPL license. Uh, anyways, uh, so that is the source code there. If you're interested, if you're, uh, say, a Unity developer and you want to take a look at this from the perspective of a Unity developer, they did do this guide that kind of gives you like a, a Rosetta Stones for, uh, you know, explaining, you know, okay, well, what's a game object or a mono behavior? What's the equivalent here? How do you design your objects and so on? This kind of runs through that. It, it shows you the, the, a quick rundown of how you can get started and understand and how things have changed between the two engines. So it should get you up and running pretty quickly. So uh, that document, I will link that as well. And yeah, that is it. That is the Castle Game Engine. Again, I can't really show you any use cases for it or anything along those lines because I am so far removed from any Pascal abilities. And to be quite blunt, I'm not going to pick up Pascal or Delphi at this point in time because they're... I don't know. There's there's not a lot of use case for it in my particular area, but I know there are some people out there that are avid Pascal fans, uh, or Delphi had a legion of fans back in the day, and it probably should have done better as a language back in the time, especially competing against something like Visual Basic. It was just so much superior to Visual Basic in the day. But that's not how history turned out. But it's nice to see something like Lazarus to keep it alive, even though I may particularly not be huge up on the interface and some design decisions they did. It is a fully functioning, capable um, IDE and open source uh, compiler chain there as well. And as you can see from Castle, there is a game engine to go with it as well. So it is what it is. Obviously, this is going to appeal to a very small subset. But as I said, I've been getting requests for like five years to feature uh, Castle on this channel. So I have finally done so. That is Castle. As far as I know, the only 3D uh, object Pascal game engine out there right now. But hey, there may be others. Let me know. Comments down below. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you thought of Delphi. If you have any experience or let me also know if this is the first time you've ever heard of Pascal. I'd be actually curious. But uh, if you are looking for a Pascal, Pascal Game Engine, well, Castle is probably your choice. That's it. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.